Everybody's ready. Okay, I'm going to call to meeting uh, this public hearing uh, of the Wheaton Park District Board of Commissioners. Uh, and the purpose of it is to discuss our uh, Americans with Disability Act transition plan. Uh, Mike, would you call the roll? Yes, sir. Commissioner Morrill? Here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. Commissioner Fry? Here. Commissioner Fahey? Here. Commissioner Viers? Here. Uh, for those of us uh, at home and in the audience, the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, transition plan was included in our board packet, which of course is posted on our website. Uh, and if, if anyone is interested in following a, a, along on uh, what will be a very brief summary uh, related to our Americans with Disabilities Act transition plan as required by federal law, uh, there are copies of it on the uh, front uh, seat uh, behind Mr. Bendy and Ms. Beyer over there. Um, so now that we've taken the roll and I've, I've teed it up, a quick review of our ADA transition plan. Uh, the Wheaton Park District has been a leader in providing accessible recreation for over 30 years. Within the last 15 years, we have complied with federal guidelines in evaluating the accessibility of our facilities and developing a transition plan. This has been done initially through consultants identifying our areas in need of improvement, our planning staff incorporating these needs into the specifications for contracted work and the work of our staff to make the modifications. More recently, our project planner position was expanded to include the duties of managing this plan and the improvements, whether the work was contracted or completed by in-house personnel. Uh, we have uh, included in this plan a summary of recent accomplishments, uh, primarily between 2011 and today, uh, of all of the Americans with Disabilities Act transition plan identified items that needed to be accomplished, such as curb cuts and drinking fountain lowering and handrails and doorknobs and things of that nature. Um, we are seeking public feedback and board concurrence on these plans as well as our plans for the immediate future. Um, the cost of all of our uh, accessibility uh, related improvements and uh, amendments to park facilities are funded through a dedicated portion of our tax levy which has many facets. This one is in particular uh, known in the park district code as our 5.8 uh, levy or recreation. Uh, for individuals with handicaps or special needs as well as funding directly through a small portion of our tax levy um, any Americans with Disabilities Act uh, modifications that need to be made to any of our facilities uh, to comply with federal law. Uh, the spirit of the law is that as long as there is a transition plan in place and work as an, is going on in an ongoing dedicated regular fashion um, that is uh, within the boundaries of what is required by federal law. To, to put it in perspective, when this uh, transition plan was originally completed by staff and by a consultant specializing in accessibility issues, an identified $1 million worth of projects uh, were uh, uh, brought to our attention, uh, obviously. And a lot of them are small projects. A handful of them are larger projects. Um, obviously, a million dollars worth of small day-to-day -day projects takes time to accomplish when you have a, a park facility system as large as the Wheaton Park District. So the purpose of today's hearing is to share with the park board and the public uh, the successes that we have had in, in meeting those compliance requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as tee up what the next several years look like on the items that are identified by staff as the highest priority for accomplishing while we're going about the day-to-day -day business of getting the rest of the work of the people done through the park district. Um, so moving on, we have a copy within this packet that has been provided via our website to the public uh, of uh, our January 31, uh, 2011 transition plan. The federal law required our, our initial transition plan be um, uh, be on the books and approved by the park board um, uh, by that date and you have an executive summary of what is two binders this thick worth of projects that the park district must accomplish to uh, maintain compliance with federal law. Uh, so I will not read the executive summary. However, it is available on our website. It is available today for anybody interested in, uh, in reviewing it. Um, what basically is a high level overview of, of what I just discussed. Moving forward, into the compliant and past the executive summary we then move to I apologize these pages are not numbered um, you get to a portion where it says summary of ADA work completed by location 
from uh, transition plan initiation six years ago uh, to today. You can see a long uh, list of bullet pointed items uh, that have been accomplished to comply with federal law as it relates to accessibility at the Arrowhead Golf Club, the Community Center, the Mary Love Coast Center, Northside Pool, um, two, four, six, eight, nine playgrounds, the Rice Pool Building, the Rice Pool Building Exterior Bathrooms, the Tui Park Preschool Facility. We've gotten a lot done, and I want to congratulate our Parks and Planning team, in particular Rob Spurl, for bird dogging all these projects. Sometimes it's harder to get a lot of little projects done than it is to get one large project done, so our congratulations for the work that has been accomplished in these six short years. Uh, summary of planned uh, work for 2018. Uh, there'll be some work done at the Prairie office with the board's approval to perform uh, uh, to perform the modifications uh, on this building that was most recently acquired by the Park District, uh, adjacent to the zoo, uh, the museum, um, primarily at the DuPage County Historical Museum. There are some bathroom-related issues on the main floor. The bottom floor bathrooms are completely accessible. However, we'd like both floors to have completely accessible bathrooms. Uh, the community center, it, these are all, there's a long list of little projects that need to happen. We've identified that our team can handle these items at these facilities in 2018. Uh, some work at Atten Park, uh, correcting cross slope issues uh, and increase accessibility uh, as part of our uh, 2018 asphalt repair program. At Scottsdale Park, we'll be reconfiguring a path to make the playground more accessible. Hull Park will extend the accessible route and correct running slope issues. At Lincoln Marsh, we'll replace a ramp from the prairie path to the marsh. Uh, at President's Park, we'll be, we'll be exploring accessibility issues around the playground. For those of you not familiar with President's Park, we have made use of a very large basin that when it rains a lot, it holds a lot of water. So this playground where there isn't a playground uh, without this basin park um, is... Uh, uh, is situated so that makes accessibility uh, for uh, individuals in, in wheelchairs or other mobility limitations uh, difficult to manage, but we're going to work it out. Uh, at uh, Donata South, uh, or what it was formerly known as Lucent Park, uh, we have uh, the installation of an ADA compliant restroom trailer on the books. At Cosley Zoo, more restroom work in the barn and in the train station facility. Um, at Clock Tower Commons, again, more restroom work. And uh, the shelter restrooms at Graff, Atten, Seven Gables, Northside, Briar Patch, we will be making modifications in those restrooms. And of course, the Boy Scout and Girl Scout cabins, those restrooms as well. Um, and sometimes there are amendments to what are known as the ADAG, uh, the, the, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, a, the rest of that acronym escapes me, but basically the rules get updated on a fairly regular basis and a new specification for how a bathroom needs to look or other facility may come down from the government. Um, and uh, we will, of course, make plans uh, accordingly. Uh, community center work uh, for 2018 is estimated at $25,000. Arrowhead Golf Course estimated at $20,000. The shelter restrooms, uh, total estimated cost of $4,000. So you get a handle on the fact that a lot of these fixes, while federally mandated are small in nature. So all of the restrooms together will work uh, up to about $4,000 in labor and small materials. Uh, and then Northside Pool, we uh, have a, a need to include a secondary access point for individuals with special needs. Um, and then finally on the back page, uh, we have a, a one pager on uh, the 2013 through 2017 expenditures as they've occurred. Um, through that particular source of our property taxes, uh, known as the 5-8 levy. At this juncture, I'd entertain any uh, uh, comments or questions from the Park Board on our need uh, to review uh, on a regular basis this transition plan. Um, and then subsequent to that, I'll go out of order, I'll ask for Commissioner mm -hmm. comments, and then I'll see if there is any public comment, and if there are none, we would close the public hearing, having met our federal requirements. Any comments or questions from the board? I'd just like to uh, say, Rob, over the uh, past six years, great work in accomplishing uh, what you did, you and the team. Nice job. We call at this time for any, any public comment, if any, regarding the Park District's Americans with Disabilities Act <coughs> transition plan. Thank you. Seeing none, I take a motion to adjourn the public hearing. 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is now closed. We do have an action item on the regular meeting agenda related to this topic. Thank you for your time and attention. Ten minutes, not bad, right? Yeah. It's all right. <clears throat> We would now call the regular yeah. meeting to order. Yeah. I so, take the roll for the regular meeting. Yes, please. Commissioner Morrill. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Here. Commissioner uh, Fry. Here. Commissioner Fahey. Here. President Vire. Uh, here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any presentations? We have uh, uh, we have Linda Dolan, who is the director of the Mary Love Co uh, Center, and she has a she has a brief presentation on what's happening at. Uh, our facility that uh, primarily deals with the recreational needs of uh, active adults and, and uh, seniors. <coughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, I just wanted to take a minute and share some of our successes from our travel program, our day trips. So out of the 20 trips we've done so far this year, 16 had over 40 participants, half were filled with 50 or more participants. So people love this program. Today we had 50 people at our Hamilton trip downtown, which is exciting. It's our third one. We're planning our fourth for um, actually the spring of 2018. And yesterday we took 100 people, two full buses to a vintage rail car in East Troy, Wisconsin. And then we stopped at the um, Elegant Farmer and everyone got to take home an apple pie. So our trips are so much fun and they're really important to us because they actually generate the most excitement and the most revenue out of all of our programs. Laura Bessie is our travel coordinator. She is so outstanding, so talented. People just adore her. Um, and we have a lot of, lot of other trips going on. We have Oktoberfest, Polka Fest, Million Dollar Quartet, 42nd Street, Elf, Wicked, Beautiful, Fireside Christmas, and many more. So we're not done yet, but the year has really been great for us. Um, it's also the program that brings us the n most new members, which is really important. That's how we keep our programs thriving and going. So I wanted to take a minute, actually, to thank all of you and Every department in this park district supports our programs. We're so grateful for it. So I brought you a party favor, um, <laughs> which we do often on our trips. So on Hamilton, this was the party favor. It's a Fannie Mae wrapped in a counterfeit $10 bill. I actually tried to put a real $10 bill in the copier. It's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, this is being recorded. <laughs> Uh, federal BI, yeah. she's kidding. Yeah, yes. So, can I approach the bench? I always wanted to say that. Now, Linda, you weren't aware that we were going to have so many guests here today. Did you bring enough for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> but you can go on Hamilton, yes? <laughs> I, of course, I will. Thank you, Thank you Linda. very much. Thanks, yeah, they're going to get right to everybody, I assure you. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Anybody have any comments or questions for Linda? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. All right, so I see some familiar faces here from the meeting over at uh, Monroe Middle School the other night. So I assume there's going to be some public comment maybe regarding the uh, proposed uh, land swap at Graff Park. Uh, can I just see by a show of hands who's interested in making public comment uh, tonight? Just real quick. Okay, just a couple. All right, uh, if you come up uh, and uh, go to the podium, give your name and address and... Uh, let us know uh, what's on your mind. <clears throat> Hi, uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Ewart. Uh, my address is 314 Westwood Drive in Wheaton. Um, I am a resident that backs up to Graff Park, uh, so I do have an interest in that. Um, I would just like to, I, I appreciate that there's this, this forum that we can talk directly to, uh, to uh, all, you know, all of our elected officials here, so thank you. Um, but I would, I would just like to encourage all of you, as you're thinking about this process, um, to, to really ask, how, what is the trade-off? What is the benefit? And why would the park district do this? Um, so this is, I'm talking about the Graff uh, Park uh, Jefferson um, school, school land swap that's being proposed. Um, and I'd just like to point out, Jefferson already has about eight acres of space at their existing location. They have a s existing school building that is in terrible shape that needs to be taken care of. And I, I want to be very clear, I really support the school. 
Um, but uh, and I think it's important, very important for all of us in Wheaton to have a good, a good quality school uh, that, that uh, with a good building. But they do have a 25,000 square foot building that's in that location already. Um, they have eight acres of space. They're proposing to switch four and a half acres with Monroe School. Um, so the existing site has more space. The residents who live next to it bought their homes knowing that they were living next to a school with the expectation that someday that might expand. Whereas uh, residents that are next to Graff Park bought our houses because you know, we value the park. I mean, that's why many of us bought our houses there. Um, it's, it's very important to us. Um, you know, we, we paid a premium. I even paid to put a gate in my backyard. You guys let, let, let us do that, and I really appreciate that. I take advantage of that every single day. Um, you know, but the, the existing location is better isolated. There's roads there that are on the side, uh, you know, that separate the school from residents. The other side of it is mostly commercial buildings. Um, the, 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 um, I, I, I haven't really heard any valid significant reason why the school district would benefit significantly from having it at, at Monroe, or at the, at the Monroe, at the Graff Park location. Um, you know, that from what I hear, it's it's a slight preference, or a little bit cheaper, or a little bit more expensive, depending on who I'm who I'm talking to. Um, but you know, all I'm saying is the school has other options than taking our valuable parks. You guys have done a great job of making that an awesome park. You replaced, you put in all sorts of improvements. You put in uh, the walkways. I think you were talking about that as part of the program here. The walkways, the playground. You know, all of these things that if a large chunk of this park goes away, it'll lose a significant value for the community, not just, um, not just our community, but the greater, the, the greater Wheaton community, too. You know, it's not just neighbors that back up to it. It's people who walk from a mile away to go run in the park. It's other people that come to the Fly a Kite Day, um, you know, all across Wheaton that, that benefit from this park. So I would just ask, ask you guys to weigh carefully the benefits that the school district is getting out of this deal with what the park district is having to give up. By, by swapping this land, you guys already have use of the ballparks over at Jefferson. Um, and if the, if the school expands and uses the existing building, you won't, you won't lose, you, you lose a ballpark. It'll, I mean, you have to expand into that land, but you won't lose both. You'll, you'll have more overall available land to use for for programming and things like that, um, you know, and uh, um, you know, and, and just the value of, of all of those improvements, it just feels to me like the park district is giving up something that's really valuable, not just for the park district, but also for the the greater community. And I don't see why there's a benefit to the school. So I would just really ask you to please consider that in in this option. Um, and I would just say, please, you know, it's, it is an important park to the rest of us uh, who live there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Is there anybody else? Hi, my name is Gary Jones. I live on 309 Birch Drive in Wheaton, um, a lifelong resident of Wheaton and a lifelong resident of 309 Birch Drive. So um, I've got a vested interest in what happens at uh, Graff Park. As a matter of fact, I... Uh, I grew up uh, playing in the cornfield that was pre graph Park. Park, um, So I don't really have any prepared comments, and I, I'll probably um, repeat some things that uh, Chris said because we don't have a uh, – we're not really organized quite yet. Um, but uh, so I guess what I want to point out is – and you guys, please correct me if you're wrong – if I'm wrong, but um, the – Park Commissioner, uh, Executive Director Bernard, and, and, and you guys appreciate your time being here tonight. But I think that we need to really look at the benefit to the Park District. Now, as people, we all need, we all know, and we all need that this school needs to be built or be improved somehow. And so, like Chris said, we're, we're all for that. Um, but um, I think the Park Board, and again, I could be wrong, but I main main job is to do what's right for the park district 
and uh, splitting Graff Park in two um, just does not seem like the right thing at the time at this time and again we don't have a whole lot of facts yet uh, on Monday night we saw some very preliminary drawings and obviously those are those those are open to change but from what we've heard so far um, splitting Graff Park in two doesn't seem to be the right thing to do and also this will irrevocably change the character of an existing neighborhood um, with again all things that we don't have facts on right now but uh, traffic patterns uh, safety for our children that are walking to the park you know all those things so um, I just wanted to point those things out and have those things considered by uh, by yourselves when as this process goes forward um, and I think there are a few people here that are probably also have a vested interest so I'm assuming that if anybody raises their hand that they're probably opposed to this proposal so okay so yeah I just wanted to make sure that everybody's voice was heard so again uh, appreciate everybody's time and uh, I look forward to working with everybody um, in a very business-like and friendly manner uh, over these next coming months. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks Gary. Anybody else? Uh, let's move on to the consent agenda. Does uh, it? If, if I may, uh, I'll, just to, for the record and for our friends at home, um, we, we the park board has received and I have received um, uh, a number of emails and a handful of phone calls on the same topic. <laughs> And I, I want everybody who, if you happen to be watching when this airs and if you happen to be here and you did craft an email, I want to assure you that every single email uh, has been provided to the park board um, and uh, every single email has been responded to personally by me. Now, if I missed one, because I got a lot of them, um, please let me know. Um, and that it's simply an, an oversight on my part. We'll double check uh, tomorrow and the next day, Donna and I, to make sure that everybody gets a personal response. Um, and an explanation that uh, this is an exploratory and, and preliminary uh, concept review at this juncture. I've also committed uh, to those that have communicated with us that should a discussion item or an action item in the future uh, appear on a park board agenda um, within 48 hours of that dialogue taking place, I've committed to letting everybody know that this is a discussion that's happening with no action or action may be contemplated. I don't see that uh, happening in the immediate future, but depending on how the dialogue with the community and the school district and the park district continue, I want to assure you that you will be communicated with effectively and efficiently. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Lucy Rose. I live at 1212 Manchester Road. I have lived in Wheaton for 36 years. Um, I've lived in various areas, but mostly over by Graff Park. I've lived in one, two, three, four, five different residences over there. I just would like to add that um, in our neighborhood, Graff is the largest and the nicest park for families to gather. When I was a child, there was Manchester Park that was torn down to create the city facilities. And so I would just like to point out that it's really important for us to have that park. And I understand if the land swap, you could say, we have this eight acres down at Jefferson, but there really are not that many people who live down that far because it's adjacent to the office buildings and then beyond that is Windscape and Windermere. And it's really the only park in our neighborhood that is large and that you can feel a sense of peace and relaxation. We spend almost every day there. We homeschool and there's a lot of other homeschoolers in our neighborhood too. And so I would just like to ask you respectfully to consider that when you make this decision, um, just the effect, the overall effect on this whole neighborhood, as well as the unincorporated Wheaton that lives on the other side of the Lori Most overpass bridge that um, is over there. So thank you, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Mike? I'm good. Okay. Uh, then let's move on to the consent agenda. Is there anybody has a motion ready? I'll make a motion for the approval of consent agenda as written. Point A, approval of disbursements totaling $1,783,510.21 for the period beginning August 9th 
and ending September 12, 2017. Approval of the August 23rd, 2017 regular meeting minutes. The approval of the September 6, 2017 Building and Grounds Long Range Planning Subcommittee, Subcommittee meeting minutes. Point D, approval of the September 6, 2017 Closed Session meeting minutes. Point E, approval of the September 13th, 2017 Closed Session meeting minutes. And finally, point F, approval of expenses over $10,000 and under the bid limit of $25,000. Payments of $11,352.50 to BGYFL for league fees and ad additional equipment fees. If okay. I may, Commissioner Fry, there was a, an update that went out that I It is. Yeah, okay. There was sure one more have... item, if you would amend your motion. Oh, I got to um, talk again. September 13th, special meeting minutes was inadvertently left off on the Friday board package. Okay. That was corrected. Uh, Let's add the other one. Okay. Approval of September 13th, special meeting Thank minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> One more comment under discussion. Um, Commissioner Fahey did bring to my attention a Scrivener's error on the closed session minutes, which was simply uh, the verification of, of attendance. Uh, no content uh, change was requested, so we will we will perfect that record and, and approve them as, as written. Okay, so we have a motion by Fry and a second by Morrill. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Okay, uh, Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. President Viers? Yes. Okay, let's move on to unfinished uh, business. Uh, we got the 28 budget appropriation proposal. Um, Mike, what, do we need a motion here? Yeah, I'd like a motion uh, the, <clears throat> the simply uh, putting into the record that the board has accepted the initial proposal for the 2018 uh, operating and capital budget and initiate the 30 day public inspection period that is required by state law. I move to approve the 2018 budget and appropriation proposal, acceptance of initial proposal and initiate 30-day public inspection period, and also Arrowhead residents. We'll just take them one, no, at, one, a time. Time. Oh, one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Second. So we got a motion by Faye, second by Fry. Is there any comment? It, Mike, that's, that document is on the website, right? Soon it, it will be tomorrow morning first. Be on the website tomorrow, and, and as we work through it, it'll constantly be updated. As the board workshops through the budget proposal, and we take input from the public, if there are changes to the proposal, the, all of the the website versions and the versions that are hard copy of all of our facilities and the library will be immediately updated the very next business day. So the one that's going up tomorrow, are there changes to the one that we got at the subcommittee meeting, or the, is it pretty was, much going to go up as that, we saw it? That that change there was one change related to I believe a capital project at Arrowhead okay. that has not made it in here yet, but it will be in the very next version. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, also we, the, for the purpose of again our friends at home in here, the board has an annual workshop on the upcoming year's capital projects. Uh, this will take place this year on October 28th. Um, there are typically some minor changes to the capital budget at that uh, annual <coughs> meeting that occurs. Um, so it's a fluid document, but this is the uh, initial proposal, and the, the law requires us to inform the public of, that as soon as it is created and accepted by the board, uh, that it be put on public display. Uh, there will be a public hearing related to budget related to the budget and appropriation ordinance that will open in uh, October, and sometimes it closes in October, sometimes it continues into November. Uh, the annual. Uh, uh, meeting uh, where the budget and appropriation ordinance and the next year's tax levy is approved is typically our December meeting uh, as a matter of information for our friends at home. Okay, any other discussion? All right, we have a motion by Fahey, second by Fry. Mike, would you call the roll? Uh, we can just have a right. voice vote All on those in one. favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, Commissioners Hodgkinson and me are absent today, and they expressed an interest in uh, voting on the Arrowhead residence when that comes up. So without any objection, I'm going to table that until our next uh, meeting. Uh, so I'll move to table. Okay, yeah, I'll second. Yeah, you got to have a motion. Right. Vote. I'll second it. <coughs> so we got a motion by Kelly, second by Fry. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Move on to new business, uh, item one, which is Americans with Disability Act Transition Plan. Is there a motion? I move to approve Americans with Disabilities Act Transition Plan recommendation to adopt the Wheaton Park District's ADA Transition Plan, acceptance of a report on projects completed to date 
<coughs> and approval of identified 2018 ADA compliance projects. Second. So we have a motion by Fahey, a second by Morrill. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, we've got a purchase down here on item two for a golf cart fleet replacement. Uh, does somebody have a motion? Yeah. Um, I'll move that we replace the golf carts at Arrowhead with delivery of 110 new Yamaha drive golf carts um, with some accessories. I also move that we trade in is it number 90, 90 of the uh, existing golf carts. So the cost of the new carts is $541,090. The trade-in value is $198,000. So the net purchase will be $343,090. And we're also looking to get approved the, uh, I want to amend it to add, uh, we're going to add GPS system at a cost of $36,960 per year based on a four-year lease. Second. Second. So we have a motion by Kelly and a second by Fry. Discussion. Mike, would you call the roll? Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Fahey? Yes. President Viers? Yes. Thank you. Move on to item three, which is the uh, Ad Park garden plot rates. Does anybody have a motion to make? A move to approve Ad Park garden plot rates. Recommendation to raise rates to $35 per plot for residents and $52 per plot for non residents. 2018. Second. So we have a motion by Fahey and a second by Morrill. Is there any discussion? Mike, it's my understanding that we sell those lots out and there's a waiting list. Beyond. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, so I think we can do this by a voice vote. Yes. yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, item four, which is the Woods or Wreck and Roll site uh, construction. Does anybody uh, have a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we approve to accept the bid from DeSitter for the flooring for the Wreck and Roll Center in the amount of $19,943.54. Second. Okay, so a motion by uh, Kelly, second by Morrill. Any discussion? Not just So, Mike, what's the funding on this again? We're paying, it's 50% is? Uh, yeah, the... Paid by the, West John. Yes, well, the, the cost of the construction, which we're handling in-house primarily... Uh, with our own team um, is being paid for out of that same 5-8 levy right. that I referenced earlier for the transition plan for those uh, uh, interested at home. And here, a rec and roll site is an adult uh, recreation site uh, for adults with, with special needs, in some cases profound special needs, that have aged out of District 200's uh, uh, program uh, at, after the age of 25. And there are there are several sites uh, within the nine community uh, Western DuPage Special Recreation Association area, of which Wheaton Park District is a founding member, um, and it was determined. Uh, and I serve on the the, part, the board of the directors for WDSRA. It was determined that a site in Central Wheaton would be beneficial. Uh, there are sites in Carroll Stream and Glen Ellen and Naperville currently, um, maybe a few others, but my my recollection might not be perfect. Um, so this site at what used to be Wheaton Central, Wheaton Community High School, um, uh, but is now a three-gym facility, Central Athletic Complex, we have added this rec and roll site that will open uh, for uh, its intended users uh, first of the year. Um, and the operating budget of WDSRA, um, which is supported by the nine member districts uh, through, again, that same 5A tax levy, is paying for all of the furnishings and all of the site requirements for uh, the staff That's and the individuals who will participate in the program. Uh, the Park District's 5-8 levy uh, will cover, has covered the cost of uh, the hard construction. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. I just think it's important to get that out there, yes, sir. what that is. <coughs> Discussion? I think we can just do a voice on Yes, sir. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item five, Scottdale Park Shelter Project. Is there a motion? I move to purchase a shelter from Reese Recreation in the amount of $20,368.40 for the shelter park, uh, shelter project, or Scottsdale Park shelter project. I'll second. So we got a motion by Moore and a second by Faye. Is there any discussion? The only question I have, are we erecting that or did that include installation? 
We are. We will be constructing that shelter ourselves. We're going to it. So that's material right. only. That's material alone, and and again, uh, when whenever the park district's own construction crew that we have on staff, our trades division constructs uh, either a playground or a garage or a shelter or anything that is in their uh, ability wheelhouse, uh, we are saving the taxpayers on the order of fifty percent of what a third party would construct it for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a motion by Morrill and a second by Fahey. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's move on to the Rath Chief Park project. Is there any discussion? Um, does anybody have a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we approve change order number three. Um, this is a time only change. We're amending the substantial completion date uh, to October 1st, 2017. Second. So we have a motion uh, by. They're Kelly. still going to make the final completion date, just substantial completion. Just change of the date. No net change in yeah. cost of the project. Yeah, no, for the it's a no change. cost time extension yeah. only. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, we're through the agenda. Let's move on to reports from staff. Mike, do you have anything to report? Uh, no, sir. From you? Um, finance, uh, we got the reports uh, emailed to us. Uh, does anybody have any comments on those reports? Nope. Again, all those reports are available on our website in advance of the meeting, and uh, they stay there in perpetuity for anyone interested in reviewing departmental reports on a monthly basis. Um, I would just which, like to comment that uh, Sue at Cosley Zoo, the, she, Cosley Zoo, um, month over month, continues to uh, increase in both attendance and revenue, and uh, that's just that's phenomenal. That's that's great. Um, and then I, too, wanted to mm -hmm. comment on uh, the Arrowhead Golf Club numbers, which uh, earlier this year I was pretty concerned because we were far behind our budgeted amount for the year, and we seem to have a stretch of pretty good weather there where we're able to make that up substantially. In fact, we're within shouting distance. And I would think, Andy, that with, I mean, it hasn't rained, and I don't remember when it rained last. <laughs> uh, we must be having a pretty good September, too. Currently, uh, for September, I just checked, we're about 10% over in from last year. Great. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see us catch up on that because it was looking pretty scary for a while, but it's... It, Never be scared. <clears throat> it's, it's what you always tell me, Mike, and yet I am. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the, I, one other comment with uh, Andy. I thought that was a, a, a great job in trading the uh, uh, the carts in and uh, the amount that uh, we were able to get back from your uh, negotiation. And that's, that's a lot of money, so... Um, Nice work. Thank you. <clears throat> yep, that's great. Uh, the Mary Lubko Center report. Anybody have any comments on that? And we'll move on to. Um, let's see. We're going to do go to closed session, right? Yeah, we we need a closed session. We have a, a semiannual legal obligation to review uh, the minutes that are are um, discussed uh, uh, out of the public's uh, domain, and uh, and then there would be an action contemplated subsequent to coming back into open session, which is simply the recommended release of one of those sets of minutes, which are no longer necessary to be classified. And the reasons why a, a, a discussion would take place in closed session would be if it were related to a matter uh, concerning personnel or litigation the park district might be involved with or on the setting the price for either the sale or purchase of real estate. Um, um, and then, of course, reviewing closed session minutes and determining whether or not to. Uh, <laughs> so, so to make a motion to. Yeah, I'll move that we go into closed session. Second. Uh, we need for the record, we'll be discussing the minutes of meetings lawfully closed under this act, whether for purposes of, or approval uh, by the body of the minutes or semi annual review of the minutes 5 ILCS 120 backslash 2C21. And there will be an action contemplated. However, it is uh, very unexciting uh, and you may feel free to leave. Um, voice. Uh, okay. uh, roll call. Roll Commissioner call. Morrow. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Fry. Yes. Commissioner Fahey. Yes. President Vires. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Thank everybody. You.